Coach Drew. Is your relationship impacting your mental health, your mental functioning, your emotional well-being? Or is it the other way around? Is your degree of mental health and emotional functioning impacting or impairing or impeding your relationship? That's what this video is all about. Coach Drew. Hey everybody, Coach Drew here. I am all about helping people have better relationships. So if that's what you're interested in, subscribe to this channel. Now, we are talking about relationships and our mental health, our mental wellness and functioning. Which impairs which and, you know, which causes the breakdown in the other, you know? Um, and I can't really tell you that for your situation. I can tell you that for mine. <laughs> But I can't tell you that for yours. But what I can tell you is the best place to start is with your own mental health and your own mental wellness and emotional functioning. Because believe it or not, we tend to, whether you call it the law of attraction or um, generational patterns, uh, we tend to gravitate towards people that are at the same degree of health, emotional health. And I really believe that the degree of relational strength, the degree of health in your relationship is going to be determined by and limited by your the, the strength of the mental and emotional health of the individuals in it. So when we think about it this way, let's say on a scale of one to 10, your degree of health and wellness, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually is at a, a seven you're probably going to connect with somebody who's also at a seven. Or if it's at a three, you're probably going to connect with the person who's at a three. So when you're in a relationship and you're like, you know what, this person, they just keep messing up. They keep on doing this. They're not well. They're... When you look at it that way, you, you, you draw this person to you because on some level, you're at the same level. Now, Again, no judgment here. That's just a theory, it's just what I think. But thinking about it that way helps you to focus on you first. Now, the reality is, I believe we all have room to grow. So as long as you are open to growth and the person that you are with is open to growth, it really doesn't matter if you're at a three or a four or five or six or a seven or an eight or a nine. There's no such thing as being at a 10, there's always room for growth. So it's safe to start at what is your level of mental health and wellness and functioning? And where do you want to go with that? Because then you can start to take ownership for who you are and what you need. So, how do you determine your own mental wellness and health and functioning? Well, you think about it. What is it that you want to be able to do? Now, let's be realistic, okay? When it comes to life, there will be stress. There will be challenges. There will be conflict. Imagining a life where there is none is unrealistic. However, imagining a life where you can respond to those conflicts and those stressors with confidence and peace and respect and, you know, things like that, that's a degree of health, right? Whether we avoid conflict or avoid frustration or avoid disappointment or we function out of a place of desperation and need and fear, those things will impact our mental health and they will inform our relationships. So think about your life, what you want to experience differently and what you and where you want to grow. That's the best place to start. Now, what are some signs that your relationship is impacting your mental health? Well, do you feel put down by this person? Do you feel depressed when you're with this person? Do you feel constantly questioned when you're with this person? Sometimes we feel these emotions, not just because of what they do, but sometimes because of how we think. What are our expectations of ourselves, right? If we have this belief that I'm not good enough and I'm not measuring up, it doesn't matter who you're in a relationship with, you might be hypersensitive to that and misreading things. So, that's where that self-awareness piece comes in. Is this my stuff or is this theirs, right? 
Sometimes, and I've said it in videos before, we marry our parents. The same dynamic that we didn't like when we grew up, we have recre recreated it or we're participating in it on some level and that can impact our own mental health. The, the, the key to that is really resolving your issues from the past because we carry them with us, right? We really do, you know, and more often than not, that involves looking at it, forgiving what there is to forgive and experiencing healing and then literally changing. And a lot of people get to the point where they say they're over it, they've forgiven, they've moved on, but they haven't done the work to change the thought patterns and the emotional ties and expectations. And that's what can fuel challenges in a relationship that impact mental health. I did a video before about expectations in the past. And sometimes we get involved with people knowing that they have challenges and they've got things to sort out. And we either expect that they will change those things, they'll grow out of those things, or that we'll change them. Both of those ideas are very, very unwise ideas, poor choices. Um, again, I'm all for people learning and growing and changing, but here's how you know if somebody's gonna learn and grow and change. First of all, if they're open to it, are they open to it? Are they aware of what it is that they want to change? I had the discussion with somebody else. They don't want people to change for them. And I get it. You know, you don't necessarily want to be the reason, but I don't think there's anything wrong with being the motivation, right? As long as the person understands that it's going to be something that they're going to own for themselves to internalize that value, to internalize that change, to make themselves better because they want to be better, right? They might be doing it to improve their relationship with you, doing it because they know it's impacting you. However, there's also that added piece that they're doing it for themselves. They want to be better. People who have an openness towards growth they're gonna be more likely to be successful with those changes, owning it and making the changes. So that's one thing to look for. Is this person open to change? Are they open to looking at themselves and open to taking responsibility? Some people aren't ready to engage in counseling or engage in coaching, and that's not the only way. You can read books, you can watch videos like these, right? You can have discussions, you can, you know, talk to, you know, Friends and family who are healthy, who have, you know, good experiences and different mindsets, you know, those kinds of things, those are ways to be open to change and growth as well. So to sum it up, we've been talking about the reality that there is a correlation between relational health and emotional mental well-being. There's no doubt about it. However, the place to start is not accusing the other person and telling them that your relationship sucks because they're, they, they're crazy or they got mental health problems. No, it's good to start with you. Talk about what you need and how you're gonna grow yourself and see if that person is open to growth, right? Start with you, focus on you first and then find out, you know, does that person see any room for them to grow? If they don't, run, okay? Head for the hills. Not, 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 you're not gonna have a good outcome. I'm not saying you need to get divorced. However, I'm saying you need to pull back get some distance and think about what you want to do, what your options are. Because if somebody's not open for growth and they're always pointing at you as the person with the problem, that's a problem, okay? In my next video, I'm going to be talking with a friend of mine about self-care. Her name is Heather Evans. She is amazing. She's got so much to talk about and to share with us about how to take care of yourself and how your self-care impacts relationships. And then we'll come back to some really specific experiences uh, like anxiety and depression and how those can impact relationships and how to be supportive when our partners are experiencing challenges with their emotional and mental wellness. Until we connect, continue to learn, heal, and grow.